My name is Jeff Morgan. I'm from Dallas, Texas. I want to take a few moments to talk about the book, The Unexpected Legacy of Divorce. The Unexpected Legacy of Divorce. This was a 25-year landmark study, uh, actually written by Judith Wallerstein, Julia Lewis, and Sandra Blakesley. Now, the interesting thing about this book is that this was a book that was not supposed to have been written. See, Judith Wallerstein was one of the individuals. She was studying the impact of divorce on, on children, and she did a, uh, I think it was a 5, 10, and 15 year study, and she thought that was basically it. And with her study, her subjects came from California. They were basically middle class or upper middle class people, people with a good education. This happened after the passage of unilateral no-fault divorce in California, signed by President Ronald Reagan, who said it was one of the biggest mistakes he made in public office. But she was under the idea, the impression, that maybe this was a good thing. It would help to create the good divorce, the happy divorce, the amicable divorce, and that that would actually be good for children. Um, so what she did, she had, a, I think it was 131 different families, and she studied them. After she was studying them, she came to the conclusion that no-fault unilateral divorce was a disaster as far as the impact of, that it had on children. Even to the parents who wanted to have a good divorce, a happy divorce, an amicable divorce, divorce that looked out for the so-called best interest of the children. Now, what really woke up Judith Wallerstein was uh, after some time, she met this one lady who had been one of her subjects. This lady had gone through a lot of turmoil in her own life. She talked about her relationship with one person, and she says, it was ghastly. I just knew it was a disaster that I had always expected and that it would blow my life away. Her last words were unforgettable. She seemed to be talking more to herself and only partly to me. My co-workers say that I have an old soul. I've always felt that I would die young, that so much unhappiness was compressed into the early part of my life that it made me, uh, that it made sense. But maybe the second half of my life is the part that I will enjoy more. I never had a childhood. I always took care of everything. Because after the divorce, this child, who was the eldest child, had to become the parent to the children and even the parent to the parent. A smile broke across her face, you know? I like the kind of woman I am becoming. I love the man I am marrying. I like my kindness and my sensitivity. I love my work. I'm on a good path. I can finally be who I am. So after 20 plus years, she's finally been able to reconcile in her own life and in her own soul the damage that has been done and move on from that. The door was almost closed behind Karen when she turned back and pushed it open. Smiling, she said, Maybe your next book should be about what happens to all of us when we grow up. Maybe your next book should be about all of us, about what happens to all of us when we grow up. Here was a girl of a good divorce, a girl of a happy divorce, a girl of a divorce whose parents tried to make things happen. And many people have said it's in the situations like this that actually more damage is done to children than in the homes in which animosity and other type of chaos is thriving. Maybe your next book should be about what happens to all of us when we grow up. Little did I realize how prophetic her words would be. So what, she, what Judith starts to talk a little bit about then is how what her parents thought probably would be a minor upheaval in the lives of their children had lasting effects. They undoubtedly expected that family life would soon resume its normal course and that parents and children alike would benefit from the end to marital conflict. In many cases, marital conflict does not even exist or it's very minimal. Not all divorces by far, by far, are a divorce because of conflict. In fact, many divorces are the result of one person wanting to get a new spouse. It may be a man who has found that he likes having sex with a younger woman. It may be a woman who has found that she has met up with a younger man who is richer and more attractive and perhaps a little bit more, a little bit smarter than her husband. And they want to abandon the family, pursue their new relationship, fulfill themselves, and then they also want to take the house, the assets, the child support, the alimony support, the children, and everything else. And children have no say in the matter. No voice in the matter whatsoever. Children are silenced. This is a grave injustice to our children that we need to speak out against. Surely these parents did not foresee the lasting effects that would extend into the fourth decade, into the fourth decade of Karen's life. 
She had described how she had forfeited her own teenage years. She was preoccupied with fears of loss, of betrayal, of abandonment. She was still locked into the self-sacrificial caregiving role of her childhood and had reinstalled it in her adult relationship with men. You see, parents, when you divorce, you sometimes create these habits, these uh, bad habits that your children develop later on that you say, why do you do this stuff? Parents, they do it because you have divorced. Or in some instances, it's been one parent that has divorced, that has forced divorce upon the other spouse and upon the family. One parent gets responsibil takes responsibility for this. Now our society likes to say that everything is shared responsibility. In many instances, unilateral, forced, no-fault divorce is the result of one person, not of both people. We need to dismiss the fallacy that divorce is always the cause of two people. It is often forced upon a reluctant and unwilling spouse. I had assumed, Judith says, that when children in the study entered into, adult, into adulthood 10 or 15 years after the breakup, I would be able to accurately report the long-term effects of divorce on their lives. What she found out is that 10 to 15 years was too short of a time frame to study to see what divorce does to children. So she, uh, she went into 25 years and she found out that divorce is not merely a minor upheaval. For the majority of children, not all, but for the majority of children, divorce is a cataclysmic, disastrous, devastating event. It is not something that children get used to. It is not something that we should say children are resilient. Children will be happy if their parents are happy. Children are devastated. They've been forced into silence. And that's what this book, Judith Wallerstein's The Unexpected Legacy of Divorce, addresses to some degree. She continues again, uh, we have not fully appreciated how divorce continues to, to shape the lives of young people after they reach full adulthood. When you divorce, it is not a temporary minor upheaval. It has impacts for a lifetime, often not just on your children, but even on grandchildren. When you divorce, the impacts can be, can be felt upon your grandchildren. Uh, and she says further that demographers now tell us, this was, book was written 20 years ago, approximately. Uh, demographers now tell us that a quarter of adults, a quarter of adults under the age of 44 are struggling with our children of divorce. And they are struggling with the aspects of divorce in their lives. We are talking about millions and millions of people who are struggling with the residue of an experience that their parents would rather forget and that their parents, or one parent, forced upon them. The youngest children in this book that she studied were in their late 20s, the oldest in their early 40s. This book explores what has happened to them in adulthood. How are they getting along? How many of them are happily married? Do they have children? Have many divorced or rejected marriage altogether? Do they still consider their parents' divorce to be the main defining event of their young lives? Are they angry at their parents? Do they now approve of the decision? Are they compassionate? Are they cynical? Are they worried, and if so, about what? What values do they now espouse in love, sex, marriage, and divorce? How disappointed or contented are they with their lives? By getting into the heads and hearts of this generation, I hope to shed light on deep changes in the American attitudes that are shaping the future in unexpected ways. So, um, if you get the opportunity, I would recommend that you read The Unexpected Legacy of Divorce. It is a book that we need to reread in our generation. Uh, we need to reread it. We need to understand this. If you are a legislator that is like in Texas, uh, that we had legislation before our Juvenile Justice and Family Issues Committee to repeal forced unilateral divorce and our Juvenile Justice and Family Issues Committee whiffed. They refused to pass it. Last legislation, last session, they did pass it. This one, they didn't. And when it was passed last session, it came out of committee. But the Texas Anti-Family Law Foundation, that enemy of the family in the, in the state of Texas, sabotaged it. And they bragged about it. Uh, they also bragged about sabotaging another bill that was passed unanimously out of committee so that neither vote got to the floor. We are still seeking to repeal the idea of unilateral no-fault divorce, it is an unconstitutional, ungodly, tyrannical act forced upon a spouse by another spouse who makes an allegation, whose allegation goes unchecked, forced upon that spouse and the children 
Many times you don't want to see the divorce forced upon this entire family by the family court tyranny and by the state. The state has apparatus in place to make sure that the divorce goes through. In the state of Texas, all it takes is an allegation. And by the way, at that point, the divorce is basically a done deal. Everything else is talking about the division of property. We have changed the conversation of divorce in America from whether divorce should even be allowed under most circumstances to, well, if one person wants out, it's his or her right of freedom, freedom of association right. They can associate who they want to. They can associate with somebody in marriage. They can disassociate with somebody from marriage. This is hogwash. The whole idea that a parent has the right of association, the right to break a marriage for any reason, for no reason, that is a perversion. It is a perversion of the right of association that is derived from the First Amendment. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because I've got some friends who keep on espousing, well, we have the right of freedom of association. It is garbage. It is hogwash. It has no application to the idea of marriage and divorce. And those people who support such a thing because they want to defend their own positions, you have been responsible for the destruction of your children. You need to man up or woman up and face that. Face the music. And if you can, reconcile your marriage. If you can, seek peace with your spouse. And if possible, try to re-engage them in marriage. If both of you are still single and have not married, stop whatever relationship you're in. Stop it immediately and see if you can reconcile. There are plenty of resources available for you. I go to a church that offers these types of resources. Watermark Church in Dallas, Texas. Come to the class called Re-Engage. They will help you through this process. But we need to dismiss with a myth that divorce is a minor upheaval in a child's life and they will get over it. Children are resilient. Children will be happy if their parents are happy. Divorce for many children is the major, major defining event in their lives even 25 years later. We are still planning to repeal the ungodly, tyrannical laws introduced first in Bolshevik Russia by Vladimir Lenin, which our United States of America has now gladly and willingly accepted in the name of progress or something like that, evidently. We are still trying to repeal these laws. We will start to organize to make a full court press against these laws, not just in the state of Texas, but nationwide. This is one of the gravest injustices not just to the reluctantly divorced and forcefully divorced spouse, but to the children of divorce. It is a grave injustice. Anybody who backs these unilateral no-fault divorce laws, these forced divorce laws, um, are not looking out for what they claim to be the best interest of the child. They are lying to you. The best interest of the child is to be raised, in almost every instance, is to be raised in an intact family with his or her natural mother and father, period. My name is Jeff Morgan. I speak only for myself. I am not speaking on behalf of any organization or individual that I have mentioned in this video. Thank you.